Welcome, 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 and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you, because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on three essentials of life. And I am delighted to present Dr. Tony Lother, a wellness chiropractor located in Andover. Welcome, Dr. Tony. Hi, Tina. Thanks. I'm so delighted that you could be on Knowledge for Wellness and give out this great information to my viewers. Thank you. Because you are a more preventative type chiropractor, which is up and coming. Yes. Is... Yeah, it's kind of the wave. It's kind of where it's going. Yes. And that's so much better, I feel, that people are taking the initiative to take care of themselves as well, and then to go to you at the ad, at sort of in the end result when they are hurting, but they can take responsibility for themselves. Yeah, and that's the biggest point is I want people to know that, that health really is a choice. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen by chance. You, you really do have a lot of uh, say in, in the health that you're going to have. Right. And so what we put in our mouth today will determine tomorrow <laughs> as well. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good point. But this is your first time on Knowledge for Wellness. It is, and it probably won't be my last. Okay, <laughs> I love that idea as well. But you uh, haven't been on, so my viewers haven't seen you on one of our previous shows. So I'd really like for you to take a few minutes and tell them about yourself and your love and your passion and why you went into this profession. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, well... I've always been kind of a health nut for as, as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to help other people achieve their best. Okay. Um, and that, I think it started back in high school. But when I got to college, I was pretty set that I was going to be a doctor because that's the, what they do. They sure. help people with their health. Mm -hmm. And so I enrolled in pre-med courses, went the whole way, took the MCAT, which is the entrance exam for uh, medical school. Okay. And, uh, and I was ready to go. And then I... I don't know why I waited so long, but that's when I started doing volunteer work in hospitals and clinics. Okay. And it didn't feel right to me. Okay. It, it, I, would, I would see a lot of people whose health was pretty much gone. Mm. I mean, it was a lot of trying to help people cope with their symptoms or their disease or their ailments or, or something. Mm -hmm. and a little too late, almost. A little too late. Yeah. And I would always think, what if I would have had these people t 10 years ago, 20 years, 30s, or maybe even if I had met them in their their childhood okay. and help them, you know, make some better choices. Where sure. would they be now? Would they be in this situation? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I decided that that wasn't for me, unfortunately, and I decided that about a month before I graduated college, so oh. uh, I really didn't know what else to do. I ended up with a degree in biology minor in chemistry, and I went into biotech research for a while, oh, okay. which was interesting work, but I, I really didn't have the hands-on with with helping people. Mm -hmm. like and more of a people person, <laughs> yeah, like direct contact. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. Okay. Um, and I would call it destiny, but I had a pretty bad weightlifting injury about three years after that. Oh. And I was laid up, you know, a grown man, laid up in, in my bed, couldn't move, had mm. to call into work sick, mm. um, really in bad shape. And it was a pretty young lady at the time who I was trying to date, so I listened to what she said when she said, uh, maybe you should go see a chiropractor. Oh. Had never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. Because um, I said she was pretty. <laughs> so I went to see this chiropractor and he evaluated me and adjusted me and put me on this a schedule of adjustments. Mm -hmm. uh, and I noticed, well, a couple weeks later I was back into the gym. I was back doing the things I wanted to oh. do, which previously I thought I wasn't going to get a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I stayed on his plan and I'd say about two months later I started experiencing more energy. I had you know, I was digesting food better, I was sleeping better, doing better than I'd ever done in, in the weight room, too. So your so. overall general health got a lot better. Oh my, it was just, just crazy. Uh -huh. It was absolutely yeah. crazy. I, I just, it was this whole new level of health that I, you know, I thought I was living at, at the fullest, but it was something totally different. So uh, I asked the chiropractor, I said, what's the, what sort of prereqs do you need to get into chiropractic school? Mm -hmm. and he said, well, it's basically the same as medical school. I'm like, I got that. Yes. So I'm, okay. I'm heading back. So mm -hmm. I quit my job right away, went mm -hmm. back to school for chiropractic, and now I'm helping other people with their health and doing something I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. So you can even compare a little bit of medical and yeah. chiropractic, Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, they're two different professions, but there's mm -hmm. 
there's merit in both and uh, there's unique situations for both. So, yeah. I mean, I, I do think that this is probably, I mean, the United States has the best medical system bar none. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna, if, if my leg is broken or a piano falls on my head or something like that, yes. I wanna be in the United States yes, exactly. uh, to get the care. Mm -hmm. But in terms of being proactive about your health, I think that that's something that we miss a lot in society and it's great that you're doing the work here at Knowledge for Wellness because you're actually empowering people to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Yes. But there's really only two ways to do health. You can either wait for something to happen, mm -hmm. wait for it to fail, or you do something about it now. Yeah. Um, if you wait for something to happen, it's usually going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was seeing. And I, and I there's a huge difference between um, helping someone cope mm -hmm. with sickness and disease or helping want someone to not be sick. Yeah, more preventative, to educate my viewers on yeah. preventative medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between that and actually helping a person move towards health mm -hmm. and to obtain optimum health. There's, mm -hmm. there's a huge difference between not being sick and being totally healthy. Yeah, and could you imagine if we blend together with the medical and Western medicine, how fantastic that's going to be for the patient? Because that's the ultimate, to give them back their quality of life. Yes. Yeah. and. Honestly, when the two pet professions, or when any professions who are in the business of helping people mm -hmm. uh, start to disagree or fight or whatever, mm -hmm. think of it as a turf war, the people are the one that lose. Exactly. So, you know, I don't, I don't consider myself an alternative for mm -hmm. what a medical doctor can do. I think we both do unique things, and there are situations that, re that would merit both. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I don't like the whole turf war thing. It's yeah. not really what I want to do. Not at all. And we want to kind of bring up a little bit about healthcare, oh, because uh, yeah. you know that would be great. Yeah. Because we do want to blend together. Mm -hmm. and Definitely. Yes. Like I said, if there there are two ways, you know, you can either be proactive or reactive mm -hmm. about your health. Um, if something happens and you do have to be reactive about your health, then uh, or if it even is health at that point, I think that the United States is a great place to be for that. Yes. It's a very expensive approach to to healthcare because. Honestly, I don't think that what we have here is a healthcare system. It's really a, a sickness and disease management system. Yes. And it's very expensive, as we're finding out. Mm -hmm. You know, a and lot even, of yeah, the medicine that we are going on too is then causing more liver and kidney failures. Yes. Also. I yeah. mean, my wife works at a uh, uh, a financial a credit union, and she all the time she's seeing people with huge medical bills, and that's mm -hmm. You know, people are going bankrupt because of these things. Exactly, because you can't work when you're sick. No. So you can't. So your employer bills. suffers. Yes, and then also because you get the medical bills, you know, and you can't. You have to either go on disability, which hardly even pays for anything mm -hmm. now. And so if we could have just backed the tape up a little bit, mm -hmm. and have thought, oh gosh, you know, in regards to talking with you or being more preventative, even in the way that we intake food. Exactly. And we're seeing a lot more of Americans getting sicker instead of better. I know, yeah. I know. And it's, it, that, that you said it just, you hit the nail on the head. It's teaching people the things that they need mm -hmm. to be healthy. Um, and that's something that I just love to do. And that's, that's what my office is all about. Mm -hmm. I, I really do want to empower people to make the decision so that they can be healthy. They can choose the level of health that they want. Mm -hmm. And um, and the way I do it's pretty simple. I just I simply educate people mm -hmm. how the body works, because when a person knows how the body works, mm -hmm. they know what it needs and what it doesn't need. Right. And that's pretty empowering. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you really think that health is your choice and that mm -hmm. that you're not you don't happen to get sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I'm talking about the chronic, you yes. know, the heart disease, cancer, diabetes, these chronic things. Yeah, we're seeing more and more of that as well. Yeah. Type two diabetes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you also look at diets and uh, people's lifestyle patterns and, and all these sorts of things, um, I try to make everything simple. So what I start with is, here's how the body works. Mm -hmm. basically, so you educate your viewers, basically, about how the body works, and then they can make the choice. But when you're talking to them, a lot of people said, oh, I didn't know that. And I get, you get a lot of that as well. Yeah. You know, oh, I wish I would have known that three, five years ago. You know, the word doctor actually means, it comes from the Latin word docere, meaning to teach. So mm -hmm. the word doctor actually comes from teachers. So okay. a doctor should be teaching people a, a, about how their body works. Mm -hmm. So here's how I explain it. I say every day, everything's a process. Everything that happens in your body is a process. Mm -hmm. 
every day you're either getting a little healthier or a little sicker. You're getting a little stronger or a little weaker, a little better or a little worse. Mm -hmm. Not in ways that you would necessarily feel, but when you lay your head on the pillow tonight, you're either going to be healthier or sicker than you were the night before. And it's all based on the things that you're doing to your body. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to continue to get healthier and want to continue to get stronger and better, that's where the th my three essentials come in. Sure. You know, I, there are three essentials of life, of health. Okay. And I think it's a pretty nice name for an office. Yes. Wouldn't three you? essentials of life. Yes, <laughs> I love it. It makes it so simple. Only three? Yeah, yeah only oh, three. Yeah. It's, it's easy. Know? People remember things that are in threes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, I start with a positive mental attitude. Mm -hmm. That's very empowering. It's huge. Um, I can, it's pretty easy to pick up people who, um, I, I, I have the feeling that they're not going to make the progress they want to see because they're constantly dwelling on negative thoughts. Oh. Um, negative, they're just always mad about something. Mm. Or they're, and I understand that because, you know, if a person's in chronic pain or they're, this oh. or that's going on, it, there's digestive, I mean, any number of things that, ailments that are going on, it's not fun to live that way. No. But if you're constantly focusing on not being, not, ha not having those things, mm -hmm. The body doesn't work in knots, it works in positive things. So I would instead focus them on, let's focus on the health that we do have. Right. Let's focus on the friends that we have, mm -hmm. on the job that we have, or let's focus on positive things. Right. So people that focus on, on positive things, you know, they heal and uh, they, they function better and they heal faster. Mm -hmm. um, negative thoughts create negative emotions and negative emotions just create negative biochemistry within the body. Mm -hmm make it very hard for a person to heal and function at all. Sure, so, so if your back is hurting, you can be thankful that you have great eyesight, you have great <laughs> hearing, you know, yes. the yes. other you know, seven senses. Very much, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and like I said before, the body is made to heal, it will heal. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that at this point in time, it may just be a rough patch that we need to help a person through. Mm -hmm. So number one, a person needs a positive mental focus, sure. mental attitude, um, to sit, tell, just, you know, focus on what you do have. Yes. Uh, studies do show that great, like people who are grateful for what they have, mm -hmm. they live longer, they live happier. So let's shift towards that. Yeah. Very, that, that was pretty simple, right? Mm hmm Okay. Number two, mm -hmm. a person needs a healthy lifestyle. Yes. Um, and really can't get into that here. Basically, they need good nutrition, they need sufficient water, exercise, and rest. Mm -hmm. um, we get into more of those in our office with different health talks and workshops. Sure, really well, you individualize to, it because, yeah. you know, someone who's under a lot of stress, you know, and their workload versus someone else that might be, you know, a mom. And even though she doesn't have a workload, yeah. she has that of taking care of the little ones. Yes, yeah. Know? So I love the idea that you individualize that as well. Exactly, you know? um, because no two people are alike. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's body is made to heal, but we're all individuals, so I like to individualize everything in the office. Sure. So again, number two, mm -hmm. healthy lifestyle. So we got a positive mental attitude, a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And the third one we need, the third essential of life is to have a clear brain to body connection. Okay. Well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just saw the look in your face like, what? Uh -huh. uh, that was a little out there for me at first too. Mm -hmm. um, but your brain controls everything that happens in your body. Sure. Your heart wouldn't beat, your, your stomach wouldn't digest food, your immune system wouldn't fight off you know, viruses and bacteria. Uh, including the flu virus. Mm -hmm. um, your muscles wouldn't work, you wouldn't have strength or balance or coordination if the brain wasn't constantly talking to the body. Right. And every part of the body is very, like you said, essential. Yes. Because they all have a part and if one backs up, yes. you know, then everything else kind of yes. falls into place. Yeah. Yes. Um, so. Every, I mean, the body is so beautifully made. Mm -hmm. Every single thing in their body has a purpose. There really is no spare parts. They all have a purpose. Even if we may not know what those are, mm -hmm. Uh, like some people say, the appendix is just extra. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure it has a, some sort of purpose. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be there otherwise. Right. 